Assembling a high quality model steam plant. This is part 18, fitting the condenser, piping it to the chimney and making gaskets for the duplex pump. In the episode when I showed the painting of this condenser, quite a few viewers got very concerned and wrote to me saying, what are you going to do about the paint in the threads? Well, the paint in the threads is not a massive issue because when the fitting goes in there, it removes the paint. But just so that these type of viewers don't get too stressed, because as we all know, stress is very bad for you, I use a tap to clean out the threads, and now I can fit the fittings. And as usual, I'm using my Barco adjustable spanner, and this is not just any adjustable spanner, it is a Barco, and a very old one at that. You will also notice that using the Barco spanner, I am not rounding the edges of any of the hexagon parts of the fittings. They're all going in there quite successfully. In this clip, I'm about to fit a right-angled elbow to the first of the brass fittings. I'm going to use some Loctite 542 as usual to make sure that the fitting doesn't leak. A word of caution when using Loctite 542, be very careful with it near paint because it does remove paint. It's quite an effective paint remover as I found out to my cost once or twice in the past. And also don't forget, this stuff is expensive and luckily you don't need to use a lot. You need a very, very small amount because as you screw the fitting in place, it spreads the Loctite 542 all along the thread. And this makes a very effective seal on any thread. And here's the elbow fitted in place, complete with its own steam union adapter to take the exhaust of the duplex pump. The next job is to dismantle the exhaust pipes from the engine. I made a bit of a mistake here, I completely forgot that I needed to take these off to fit them to the condenser, so I used some sealant when I fitted them. The sealant I used is a modern substitute for Boss White, and it's very easy to remove. It is definitely not silicone rubber. There's no place for that anywhere near a model steam plant in my opinion. In this clip, I'm fitting the exhaust pipe from the duplex pump to the condenser's adapter. And the reason I'm doing this is just to verify that the condenser still aligns with the holes in the baseboard and that nothing has moved. Now it's time to fit the copper exhaust pipe that's been threaded into the union adapter that I silver soldered onto the end of the steam manifold. And as always, I'm using some Loctite 542. Even at this stage, it's important to make sure that the elbow is at the correct angle. And now I'm about to screw the elbow in position on the fitting on the condenser. Being very careful not to scratch the paint and being especially careful not to spill any 542 on the paint. And briefly mentioning the subject of paint, I'm quite pleased with the match of this condenser with the paint on the boiler. Not just in colour or shade, but in texture. And this paint is not precision paints and it's not from Blackgates Engineering, it's from Halfords. And it's called Halfords Satin Black Paint. I didn't show the fitting at the pipe at the other side because the process is identical to fitting it at this side. At the moment I'm tightening the union nut that holds the duplex pump's exhaust pipe in place. And it's time now to secure the condenser to the baseboard. My original plan was to use some 4BA bolts, but this is not working out as planned because the bolts are having to initially go in at a slight angle and then they straighten up as they go into the hole. So I'm using some wood screws instead which will be fine, by the time I've painted them black you won't even know that they're there. It really was the lesser of two evils, I could have continued struggling with the bolts and then ended up marking the condenser, having to dismantle it and repaint it, and I really didn't think that would have been a smart idea. So here is the end result. The manifolds are bolted back to the cylinder, and the pipes go to the condenser, and it's all looking very steam engine like. In this clip I'm fitting the drain pipe to the condenser tap. The idea being that you fit a piece of silicone rubber piping to the copper pipe, open the tap and drain the condensate from within the condenser. It's time now to pipe the exhaust from the condenser to the chimney. I wanted to use one continuous length of copper pipe for this. I didn't want to put any elbows in it. I thought the elbows looked really good on the steam inlets, but to also put them on the outlets would have looked a little bit odd. And also in one continuous length it's much easier to polish the exhaust pipe using a piece of brasso. I still have to fit the insulated piping from the boiler to the steam engines. And at this stage I don't know which pipe is going to be on the outside, the exhaust pipe or the inlet pipe. It's time now to drill the chimney pipe to take a fitting to direct the steam up the chimney. As always first of all I use a centre drill and then I go up the drill sizes until I get to the finished size which is 3 eighths of an inch. 
This clip shows the pipe in position. There will be a fitting down inside the chimney and the steam union will screw into that and then there'll be a long pipe inside the chimney to exhaust near the top. Because with a gas fired boiler you do not want the engine's exhaust pressure to draw the fire. In a coal fired model steam boiler that would be just what you need, a big blast of steam going up the chimney. A blast pipe up the chimney is not required when using a gas fired boiler. Here are some general shots of the layout and you can see quite clearly how everything's piped. And for the viewer who asked if I could show an aerial view, well here it is, it's about as aerial as I can get in the workshop. And in this shot you can see clearly how the condenser is piped to the steam engine. I will show a full aerial view when the steam plant's finished. Do you remember these? These are the steam pipes that are lagged in string and they're looking good. When I was painting this pipe lagging it looked very hairy as the paint was going on but now it doesn't look too bad and what bit of hairiness was left I just rubbed off with my fingers. I've had problems with this pump mainly due to the silicone rubber infusion but anyway that's gone now but it does need some gaskets really so I'm going to make some. I'm not going to use silicone rubber perish the thought. Instead I'm going to use some of this. This is brown paper for wrapping presents and parcels. I've shown how I make gaskets for model steam engines many times, normally using gasket material but this brown paper is a bit thinner. The principle is the same though, I use the ink pad and the main cylinder cover, or the water chest cover in this case. Cut out the centres, punch the holes and then finally cut out the shape of the gasket. And don't forget if you're using this stuff, it is brown paper, it is not strong and it will tear very easily. So be careful as you put all the parts back together. And don't worry if there's any brown paper, or should I say gasket material, sticking out around the edge. You can soon remove this with a sharp knife. Never over tighten these bolts. If you shear a stud, you have a problem. While I was in fit brown paper gaskets to the duplex pump mode, I thought I would fit a brown paper gasket to the steam chest cover also. And with the steam chest cover removed, you can clearly see the valves inside. Very nicely made, as everything was that Bernard Walker made. Well, maybe apart from this gasket. What I never do is leave the centre of the gasket in place because it always goes soggy and it can actually break up and drop into the valves. So I just made another brown paper gasket, cut out the centre of it and fitted it to the steam chest. And that's about it for this episode. I'm thinking that we're very close to the end of this series. Possibly one more episode should do it, we shall see. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.